Hello everyone, I'm Tectonic Improv, and I've been wondering, did you play this? That's right, I bet you thought it was going to be another uh, 11 months before another episode, but that's not the case. Hot Off the Presses is another Did You Play This, the series of videos where I look back on games from yesteryear that didn't get a lot of time in the sun. And today's games fit that bill to a T. You see, we're going in a different direction from the past two games, and setting our sights on the vast ocean of community-made Super Mario World ROM hacks. Super Mario World is a fan-favorite entry in the Mario series, and I suppose because of this, the hacking community for this game is time-tested and devoted. Since the release of the level editing tool Lunar Magic back in the year 2000, we've seen countless upon countless people on the internet try their hand at making a Mario game of their own. The tool is just so user-friendly, practically anyone can pick it up and make something. Whether or not it's good is another story. Super Mario World is probably my favorite 2D Mario game. Everything from the graphics to the physics to the level design hits just right with me which is why I got so enthralled with the hacking community in the late 2000s to 2010s. It was like I was playing a thousand different sequels to one of my favorite games. Now, if I was to cover all the hacks I played back in the day, we'd be here forever. Mario ROM hacks are like a rabbit hole I can milk endlessly for video ideas anyway, so I'm going to pluck three for now and return with more at a later date. All three of these hacks can be beaten in under an hour, and let's get started. First up is Bonsai's Level Sampler, created by Bonsai Bob, or as I knew him, the newer guy. Back in the early days of YouTube, this guy was one of the first channels I discovered. The newer guy mainly showcased excellent Star Fox 64 personal bests and the like, but a few of his videos were level demos of custom Super Mario World levels. The newer guy hasn't uploaded in 10 years, but there is a publicly released demo of his work up on SMW Central, the premier place to not only find ROM hacks, but the tools to make said ROM hacks. Banzai's level sampler is a proof of concept more than anything. There isn't a story to be found, the levels can be completed in any order, and there's a constant break of the fourth wall. It's clear the newer guy intended on expanding this, considering many of the levels demoed on his channel are noticeably absent here, but what we have is a solid experience. The levels here vary from ice caps to grassy hills to an airship. At a glance, you could probably pass this off as the original Super Mario World, however, upon closer inspection, it's clear to most that this is not a professional who designed these levels. There are a handful of times in this hack where you're expected to make these leaps of faith, it's annoying to be coasting through a level only to stop dead in your tracks because you're worried that if you take this jump, it could be your last. Also, some of the level gimmicks end up not really hitting as hard as they should. Take the level Mountain Line Rider, for example. Halfway through it, the game explains that you'll have to be patient and wait for the moving platform to make its way through the level. Personally, I don't think this works as a concept, since instead of going at your own pace, you're forced to adhere to the speed of the platform, which is incredibly slow. It can also despawn if you go too far away from it, making the level unwinnable. For another example, both castle levels use the moving fences as a motif, making them both feel homogenized and one and the same. The music block level kind of speaks for itself, and finally, in fire caves, there's this area at the beginning of the level which warns you that purple coins don't turn the blocks when activated by P-Switch. Obviously this is setting something up, and at the end of the level, when you finally pick up a P-Switch, it becomes clear to an outsider what's going on. My problem with this isn't the concept, but the execution. This is the only time in the game where we see these coins, not even the rest of the level has them. Making your way through this fairly challenging level, you'll probably even forget about the coins to begin with, and by the time you wrap around and see them again, it'll be too late to react, and you'll end up dying moments before completing the stage. I think if these coins were scattered throughout the level, it would help tremendously in keeping the first instance of them in the back of our minds. Finally, and this is really more of a nitpick than anything, but as you can see throughout the levels, the newer guy has put dragon coins in precarious spots that you usually have to go out of your way to obtain. My question though, is why should I? Collecting all five result in a 1-up, but in a hack where you can go to any level at any time, is it really worth the risk to pick these up? That's not even taking into account save states, which I tried to keep to a minimum when playing this game, by the way. 
I suppose what I'm trying to say here is, I would like it if ROM hackers could be a little more creative with the reward for picking up Dragon Coins, since the current reward is lacking to say the least. Those complaints out of the way, this is a breezy little hack that gives newcomers a small taste of what exactly this community is capable of. This next hack is the most unique I've played in a long while, and since it's getting pretty close to fall, that means the entirety of the internet is shitting their pants over Halloween, so tis the season. Call of Cthulhu by Yashum is based off of the Lovecraftian mythos, and stars Mario trying to stop the awakening of the Great Cthulhu. I'm kinda cheating with this one, because I actually hadn't played this until last year, but the story of how I played it is pretty unique, so I thought it'd be interesting to share. One night, I was catching up with a friend of mine from school who I hadn't seen in a while. When we went back to his place to hang out, I took a look through his exhaustive game collection and found a blank Sega Dreamcast disc with the words Mario C.O.C. written on it in Sharpie. When I put it in the Dreamcast, hyper-realistic blood came oozing out of the TV speakers. This of course ruined the carpet, and I was promptly kicked out. Okay, obviously that last part isn't true, the stains came out. But seriously, the first part of the story is true. Playing this game on a disc rip of a SNES emulator for Dreamcast gave the game a lot more atmosphere. Unfortunately, I didn't get very far into the hack, as I couldn't use save states, which the game highly recommends you do, and it ran like ass. This time though, I did end up finishing it, and I was very impressed. I don't really like it when fans try to make something dark and serious out of kid-friendly material, but this time I think it was done wonderfully. It feels like Mario is in Call of Cthulhu, and not like Call of Cthulhu is in Mario, if that makes any sense. Not to mention, it's not just your typical creepypasta horror game. Lovecraft relies a lot more on disturbing imagery as opposed to straight up jump scares. The sprite work, coupled with the creepy music, makes for a truly unsettling experience. This hack also has some really cool ideas. I don't really want to spoil a lot of them, but here's one that's fairly early on. This area is non-Euclidean, which basically means that the geometry doesn't adhere to the normal laws of geometry, making what would normally be a simple jump more like this. If I had any complaints with this hack, it'd be that the game really does rely on save states, since if you die, you're sent back to the beginning of the hack, which is incredibly harsh, especially if you lock yourself in a save state. Also, there are some puzzles involving pushing blocks, which I found to be somewhat tedious at times, but it wasn't enough to dampen the experience. Try and track this one down wherever you can, it's worth the playthrough. You don't even really need to know about the Cthulhu mythos to appreciate it either. I'm personally not as well versed as I would like to be, and I still like this one a lot. General fans of horror and Mario can find something to enjoy here. And so we come to our final game for the video. And this one is a unique entity, because I know for a fact that nobody in the entire world has played this hack. Because I made it. I was working on it from late 2011 up until June of 2012. I took a lot of breaks during that period, so it wasn't like it was consistent work. The day I finished the hack was interesting. I was excited to finish something and call it my own, but I was also glad to finally be done with it, because there were some points I wanted to pull my hair out over certain things glitching out, like the overall path screwing up or disappearing sprites. Alright, so the hack is called It's a Me. And the basic plot is Mario has to head to a shoot for a documentary film about his life, but of course Bowser is trying to stop this. The hack is 6 levels long and could be completed in about a half hour. At the risk of sounding like an egomaniac, I'm still proud of some of the things in this hack. I think I did a fairly good job in the overworld for example, and the concept of an underground forest level is a neat idea to me. However, overall, the level design is sadly pretty boring. There's plenty of stretches of land where there's nothing but a few Koopas thrown in. The water level is just plain lazy, and even the leaps of faith I was just complaining about in the newer guy's hack are here. Near the end of this hack's development, I was really itching for it to be done, so most of these are a result of corner cutting. Nothing shows that corner cutting more though than with the final Bowser fight at the end. As you can see, this guy just plain doesn't look right. Getting any ASM to work was a huge headache. 
So I threw my hands up, and instead of fixing the colors, gave it an in-universe reason. Yeah, see, here's the cape. I think that this is the only place where you can get the cape. And next up is the boss. First, Mario, get ready for battle. I may be a little bra black, black and crispy from that lava bath you gave me, but I can still fight. Yeah, alright. You're probably wondering, why would he say that? Well... Uh, allow me to explain. <laughs> so I'm kinda proud of that, to be honest. The hack ends with Mario being late to the set due to Bowser's antics, and Yoshi getting the movie instead. I was trying to pull a twist where Yoshi sorta of betrays Mario, despite him helping you throughout the game. I pull it off? I don't know. I suppose it's up to you guys to decide. From simple level edits to almost completely different games, Mario World ROM hacks have had a long-standing, thriving community to really push the envelope with regards to what this game is capable of. There are some incredibly creative hacks out there that I would like to talk about. One in particular, but that's for another time. You can find a link to the newer guy's hack in the description. My ROM hack is also in the description, but if you're not interested in playing it, I've also uploaded a playthrough that you can find linked. The Call of Cthulhu hack, I'm afraid I can't link, as the patch itself is nowhere to be found online. At least I couldn't find it. You could probably do a little sleuthing and find it easily enough. That's all for now with Did You Play This. I'm Tectonic Improv, and I'll be back soon. Thanks for watching, guys.